Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to the 10th installment of our IC7300 from A to Z series. Today we're going to look at the passband tuning, the twin passband tuning function of the radio. That's covered on page 4-5 of the manual. And as I go through this on the radio, you might want to have the manual page open and follow along because the manual page actually gives some pretty good graphic illustrations of what's going on as I describe some of these features. Let's get to it. Well, we're going to give this a try. Unfortunately, the band conditions right now are really, really bad on all the bands, so I'm going to try to find some signals to go through the uh, twin passband tuning here, but uh, this may take a while and probably have to cut out a bunch of this as I try to find some signals. With the twin passband tuning, you've got the center knob and then you've got the outer knob. And each of them move, a, I'll call it a different portion of the filter. It really isn't exactly two filters, or at least I don't believe it is the way that it seems to be implemented. So if I move the knob, it shows you on the display that I'm shifting. And you can hear how that's changing when, the, when we have a signal. Five nine Polk County, Papa Oscar and Lima Kilo QSL. And then I can use the outer knob, and it also shifts the other half of the filter. And it does. You'll hear the effect is very similar. Now, one of the things is when you turn the knob, it puts the display up, but then it immediately disappears, which makes it a little difficult to see what's going on and, and try to explain this. So one of the things you can do, you have the filters up at the top here, filter 1, 2, and 3, which is increasingly narrow is the way their default settings are. We'll go through setting those in a future episode. So I'm actually going to put it on the middle one, but if you press and hold the filter, it brings this display up and it leaves it. We're going to use the middle one, as I said, which is a 2.4 kilohertz bandwidth filter. This is the same display that came up when we turned the knob, except it has an additional feature here that you see, PBT1 and PBT2. So we can actually see as I'm moving the inner knob and as I'm moving the outer knob it shows you the portions of the filter that are moving and when it turns green you're in the default position it also beeps which you will hear so let's take a look at what this does we are on upper sideband here and as I move the filter up you'll hear that the lower frequencies are going away and unfortunately I couldn't find somebody where there were two adjacent signals today but if there was a signal below this one that was interfering as I shift this up it moves part of the filter up if I turn the outer knob in the same direction it shifts both filters up by the same amount and when the two are actually lined up, you'll notice that the bandwidth here matches the bandwidth that's selected for this filter. So if I move them both up the same amount, the filter bandwidth stays the same, but I'm just shifting it up. It's the same as IF shift on other radios. And if I move this back down, that one's in the center, and I move this back down, and that's in the center. I'm not super crazy about the way ICOM displays this because I believe it's a little bit misleading. So here's what happens. If I shift the one up 200 hertz, and you'll notice the bandwidth actually went down by 400 hertz, and then I shift the lower one down by 200 hertz, you'll notice the shift now is zero and my bandwidth is 1.6 kilohertz because I've moved half of the filter up 400 hertz and the other half down 400 hertz. And really, the part that you're listening to here 
is the part that you see in orange in the middle here, you're only hearing that part of the signal. So you're shifting part of it up and the other part of it down. And, you know, you see the little red and the blue on either side here. Those are really kind of out of the picture because I've shifted one up and one down and you only get the part in the middle. So I think this would actually be a little bit more clear if ICOM didn't display the leftover parts of the filter that are outside the bandwidth that you're hearing. And it clearly is telling you that's what it is. Exactly how they have it implemented on the radio, it's hard to say because this is all done in software on this radio. It's part of the DSP firmware. So um, we don't really know exactly how the code is implemented because you can't go look at a schematic. But I believe this is just shifting the bottom part up and the top part down. Now, one other thing that you can do, if you press and hold this button, the, this is also a button as well as a knob. If I press and hold it, it puts everything back to default. So you can set the filter back to default by just pressing and holding that. Whiskey Bravo 2, Indy Oscar Lima, 5-9, Polk County, Papa Oscar Lima Kilo, QSL. So let's do a little tuning around and we'll see if we can find some adjacent signals here. And I'm going to put the scope on so I can see. We're not covering the scope in this episode, but one of the things, there are several options. And this is the signal that we're tuned to right here. And you notice that it is to the right of the center line. The way I have my scope configured... I've actually got the center line set for the actual carrier frequency. Uh, there's an option to set it for the center of the filter frequency, or the, the center of the filter, which would put the whole signal in the middle. I like to be able to look. If it's an upper sideband signal, then you're going to see the signal to the right. If you're on lower sideband, you'll see the signal to the left. But this also, at least for me, makes it easier if I'm trying to find, like, adjacent signals now that looks that's just noise on the band maybe some electronics in my house or something in the neighborhood so as we're recording this the georgia qso party is going on and i think the south dakota qso party is going on now here's another signal up here but he's really not close enough to the one that was below me that he's causing any interference. So if this signal down here was close enough to him that I was hearing, you know, bits and pieces of it, one of the things that I would do is I could take both of the filters and shift them up till they're matched and then that would basically shift my filter more into his signal so I get more of the high frequency it cuts out some of the low frequencies in his voice but it makes it so that I would be getting less interference from the one below him and also likewise we'll put this back if I had a signal that was right here just above him and I was hearing the low frequencies from that I could shift both of these down so that I shifted the entire filter away from the signal up here and now you hear more lower frequencies in his voice All right, you hear the other signal here barely. Yeah, now it's gone away. I'm hoping to be able to demonstrate this, but this just may not work out. So, hopefully, you get the 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 idea here from what I'm showing. We can shift the filter, you know, either way up toward the high end, which will move you away from interference on the low end or you could shift it to the low end and then of course with the twin pass band if I had interference on both ends 
then I can move one of the filters ends up and then one of the filters ends down and now my shift is zero but I've narrowed what I'm looking at here now you can do exactly the same thing this is a bandwidth of 1.6 kilohertz let's put this back if I just change to the narrower filter this is exactly the same thing here on filter 3 and listen carefully let's see when he talks again hopefully he does So listen to that audio quality. Now when I go to the wide one here. Okay, K6 Lima Radio Charlie came way back up. You're five nine in Bibb County, Georgia. So let's Roger, thank you. QRZ, November four, Papa November. QRZ any station for the Georgia QSO party. November four, Papa November. You notice I've made the bandwidth one point eight kilohertz. Listen to it in the default. When you change filters, it puts this. Okay, Tango, hold on. Who's the KE0? Okay, KE0 POT in Nebraska. Thank you. You're 5 9 in Bibb County, Georgia. Okay, by chance, do you work CW or just sideband? So. You notice when I switch to the filter 1 set to a bandwidth of 1.8. It sounds exactly like filter 3 in the default mode. And if I put this back to default, you'll get the much more full audio spectrum of his voice. So essentially with the twin pass band, you're tuning halves of the filter. And the other thing that's interesting, let me put this back to default here. I think I turned this one up. I started with the inner knob. If I turn the inner knob down, it doesn't matter which one you turn up and which one you turn down, or at least I haven't been able to tell any difference. If there is something that matters, I can't tell. Notice he sounds exactly the same on filter 3 with a shift of 0 and 1.8 kilohertz. So, twin passband tuning, I believe, is primarily allowing you to move the upper half and the lower half of the filter independently so you can shift things or narrow them or shift and narrow them depending on what kind of interference that you're trying to um, that you're trying to work against sadly I couldn't find a lot of interfering signals today again because there's just not a lot of good signals on the band but hopefully this helps one final note on the twin pass band tuning you can continue to turn the knobs and make the filter bandwidth uh, significantly narrower than the default filters built into the radio, but there will come a point of diminishing returns where you make it so narrow you won't be able to understand any uh, voice characteristics in the audio. I know this was a lot of time to spend on one manual page, but hopefully it gave you a sense for what you can do with the twin passband tuning. Next time, we'll look at the rest of the settings for the IF filters and how you can set the bandwidth and what the defaults are for the various modes. I hope you enjoyed. I'm Tom, WA2IVD. Thanks for watching. Ham Cured Smoke.